For our final days in the Dampier Archipelago, we take the time to immerse ourselves in its unique landscape, including visiting this monument to one man's determination and independent spirit. The guy moved onto the island and started building on there in 1966 and spent nearly 40 years until his death in 2005 living on that island. Oh, outdoor kitchen with a difference. Welcome to Free Range Sailing. For those of you that are new here, I'm Pascal and this is Troy. For the last four years and 180 episodes, we've circumnavigated Australia, culminating with a very demanding year refitting our 1969 Australian built Clansman 30 sloop rigged yacht and sailing her across the Great Australian Bight. Now we've returned to our home state, we're taking the time to explore some of the places we didn't get the chance to see as much of before. Join us each week for more great sailing, fishing and adventure as we cruise the West Australian coast. Last week we were kept very busy getting a whole lot of repairs, maintenance and other work done, ready to get back out into the remote wilderness. I'm incredibly happy because <laughs> my skipper and captain Love of my life, Troy has fixed the engine mount so we can go to the Montevellos. <laughs> Yay! With our time in civilization drawing to an end, our final chore was to refill our diesel tank. So the fuel comes down through this tube, this tube here, and into our bunker. That's the bunker down there. It's basically below everything below our feet in the keel is our bunker and it has about takes about 200 litres of fuel. So I'm just going to go and watch and make sure that the fuel is filling up and it's not getting too high. A mix of wind and red dust meant scrubbing the deck was almost a daily chore for us in the Pilbara. Foul tank of land. We've moved from Royal just up from the anchorage at Hampton Harbour and we've got to kill some time before we head out to the Montebello Islands because we don't have favourable winds. We've come up to Taipole Island which is now commonly known by the locals here as Sam's Island and that's because a guy moved onto the island and started building on there in 1966 and spent nearly 40 years until his death in 2005 living on that island and he became a bit of a fixture here and Rio Tinto, the major um, iron ore mining company here, actually provided him water, plumbed a water line in from the, the main town. We're going to go have a look at uh, the structures on there and what he built. He was quite an artist, so we're going to go check it out. When Sam first contemplated living full time on this island, it had a few mangroves on it, but apart from that, it consisted mainly of rocks and an abundance of rats with no soil whatsoever. Squatting in a cave, Sam would spend his early days on the island scouring it for useful materials and transporting tons of soil, water and cement to begin building his dream castle and garden. Sam was born in Yugoslavia and tragically lost all of his family in the Second World War. As a young man, he spent some time in the US Army before emigrating to Australia and finally settling in Dampier, where he was part of the original crew that built the 10 mile causeway connecting the new town to the larger township of Karatha. Sam enjoyed having visitors on the weekends as long as they came through the front door and rang the bell to notify him of their arrival. This is, um, <laughs> it's really built to last. I mean, given that this guy just, yeah, he was just using the resources around him and just whatever he could scavenge, he's, this is an enduring thing. Who would have guessed that someone with the name like Ostagish would have been good at stone and cement work? Oh, outdoor kitchen with a difference. Oh, 
Wow. I've really kept this probably just like how it was 15 years ago. The local primary school, it's a pet project to keep this a, an actual site and a treasure of Dampier. I, th I think it's a really worthwhile project because it's living history and it's their local history. It's not some abstract that they, they learn somewhere else. That's right. Yeah, and it's it's really um, a feature of Dampier. Dampier didn't, wasn't really a town. Like, there was always Indigenous people living here, moving in and out, but there wasn't anyone settling here until they started really started mining here in the 60s and Sam was a fixture here in the 60s. So it's important to keep these things going. He's got a few teapots so we can relate to Sam. Everywhere over there is lots of lanterns. I guess they would have been important to important to Sam. So there's not there's not too many belongings here, but everything's kind of practical. Life on the island wasn't always easy for Sam, who lived through many severe tropical storms, as well as being almost ruined by a fire in 1988. The fire tragically gutted the wooden sections of his castle. Fortunately, the Dampier community rallied together to help rebuild his home after the accident when the then Hammersley Iron, now known as Rio Tinto, piped running water to him from the township and gave him a 99 year gentleman's lease for the island. There's Sam's grave up there and his cat, so I think we'll just look at it from down here. <laughs> Give him a bit of peace and quiet. It's pretty, pretty remarkable. He had all this place to himself for a while. It's nice they've kept it going. It was going to get de demolished. I'm glad, they, I'm glad they didn't do that. Tear. We're only doing five knots though. We've still got a little bit of opposing current. So we can put a weight there and then by putting it like that you can raise or lower it. Something a bit unusual that you haven't seen before on free range sailing, we're cooking steak today. We love steak but we often don't get a chance to cook it on the boat and what we're doing at the moment is called a reverse sear and I first read about it in a book called Fire to Fork by Harry Fisher. And what you do is you're getting your steaks, the internal temperature 10 degrees under doneness. So what we wanna do with these steaks is to get them to about roughly 45, 50 degrees, cause we're going for a medium rare steak. We can't actually cook steaks like this on the boat. So we've come ashore and we're doing it over a beautiful fire. And it actually feels really great to be here with a fire burning, it smells beautiful. And it's something we don't do very often. So steak basics. Um, it has a whole section on the reverse sear, so heating up your meat slowly, very slowly by the fire and getting the smoke of the fire um, and then just doing a really hot, hot sear at the end. Troy's had to go and move Marul uh, because the tide is going down and we have parked her a little close into shore so he's just going to move her um, a little bit further out and meanwhile we just took the stakes off the fire they've reached about the bottom end was about was over 45 degrees and the top end is about 42 so that's perfect for rare to medium rare steaks 
So now I've just got to rake down the fire, um, get the coals all flat, build up um, supports either side and put our grill over the top. So I just seared them for like three minutes on each side. That co Those coals were so hot, it was really hard for me to move the steak around and get the coals just right. So it's a little bit burnt there. Well, I think these will be the best steaks we've ever had, hey Troy? Oh, mm. big call. We ate one because it was absolutely delicious and we didn't want it to get cold. And yeah, really happy. I reckon it is one of the best steaks I've ever had. Crispy, but very, very tender and very, very juicy in the middle. There's just such a beautiful, red color that comes to it from doing that reverse sear and then just really quickly hot searing it over the coal. It's just got such a nice crispy texture. The fat's really rendered. Uh, often when you get steaks that have been cooked on a high heat, you don't get that rendered fat. It's just really beautiful, really melts in your mouth. So we'll cut up this second one and present it nicely. The other one we just kind of like tucked in and then I've just done a bit of a cleaning up. Whilst we ate the first ribeye steak au naturel, we topped the second with Harry's delicious chimichurri sauce. Thanks to Harry for putting out this book and teaching me how to cook, or teaching us how to cook a steak by the fire. <laughs> Smoky goodness. Not only does Fire to Fork teach you how to cook the best steak over the fire, it's also filled with over 50 delicious recipes and invaluable tips on campfire cooking. We've teamed up with the Harry's publisher to promote the book because we think it's an excellent resource for any bush cook. To find out more or grab a copy of your own, you can head to the description of this video where I've provided a link. Things are really starting to heat up now. It's it's hot. I think we're going to set up the sunshade soon. Troy's just giving the boat a bit of a scrub down and wash with salt water and that should cool the boat down a bit. We just went for an amazing um, swim through the mangroves so we rushed out. We didn't have time to grab the camera. We grabbed our underwater cameras. We rushed out, uh, set up the dinghy and went up into a mangrove creek and then went out with the outgoing tide. And it's really beautiful. We saw lots of fish, lots of turtles and yeah, it was something a bit different, something really nice. Um, but yeah, now we're just cooking some lunch, um, frying up the crayfish that we caught on the way out. That There was some little bit of coral on the way out of that mangrove creek, so we found um, a crayfish under there. I'm just cooking that up and I'm going to make us a little salad, but it's hot so I'm trying to do it quickly so I don't heat up the boat too much. And we'll have to, I think we'll have to go set up the windscreen. There's a slight bit of breeze so we might be able to get some air in and once we've got the shade after everything should cool down hopefully. So we should probably show you some of that footage we captured in that mangrove swim.
If you enjoyed the video, hitting the like button helps to get this video suggested to like-minded people. Thanks in advance and see you next time.